Ladies and gentlemen, from Redding, California, this is your friend, the chemistry class. Yo, 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 yo. Thank you. It's good to see you. I miss you. So I want to give you another example, which I said I will explain to you a case where you have more than one single atom. So I have two single atoms, which is going to go in center. Yes? Well, let's try to do both and see which is more reasonable. One option is to place both of them in center. And we have two hydrogens. Hydrogen can make one bond. So I put one hydrogen on the oxygen side, one hydrogen on the carbon side. That's one option. The other option is place carbon in center. Oxygen and hydrogen atom on the sides. So let's see which one of these are more reasonable, which one molecules are going to decide. So I'm going to define a new concept. It's called formal charge, which is calculated by this formula. If you want to calculate formal charge on or any atom, all you have to do is take total number of valence electrons in one atom at a time minus total number of non-bonding electrons, and minus half of the number of bonding electrons. Then you can calculate formal charge. I'm going to do this on the board. Simple formula. Just have to plug in in the formula to calculate formal charge. Guys, if you want to buy a Christmas present for somebody, you go to Macy's. You find a, a watch, you have $20 budget, and the watch is $40, you have to pay $20 on your credit card. You have to charge it to credit card. And then you go to Walmart, you see the same watch for $20. So you can buy the same item for less money, less charge. Which one do you choose? Less charge. Adams do the same thing. They say, I have two ways, left or right, whichever has less charge, less formal charge. Ladies and that gentlemen, that is a better thing for me. From Redding, California, this less is your friend, the chemistry class. Less charge means less energy. Yo, less charge yo, means yo, yo. stability. Thank you. So Adams, it's good to see you. Which I miss you. To go. This example, are you with me? Which has less charge, Okay. easier to go. Okay. So. I'm going to complete these two and show you that one of them is rejected by this formula. One of them has too much charge. So let's do that. <coughs> by the way, <coughs> if you add charges, if you have charges, four more charges in atoms, you add them together, it must be equal to the charge of the polyatomic ion. That's a rule which I'm going to apply and show it to you. OK. So if I am using the option where carbon and oxygen, they are both in center, I can complete the octet. This oxygen has double bond, single bond, two, four, six, eight complete octet. Two, four, six, eight complete octet. So I have completed octet by showing this structure. And the way I do that, I look at total number of valence electrons. Carbon is bringing four. Oxygen is bringing six. Hydrogen is in group one. It has one valence electron. Two times one is to add them together. You have 12 electrons. So, and I have used 12 electrons here, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So you say this is a good option. You may look at it and say, that's a good option. 12 electrons brought in, 12 electrons used to give a complete octet. I'm going to calculate the formal charge on every atom on this molecule and decide, is there a charge or not? If there is a charge, it's rejected. Only if the other option doesn't have a charge. So let's calculate formal charge on carbon. Let's do it together. Are you tired? Is Ali tired? I can see Ali is tired. 
I, I can give away a few chocolates to few people who are tired because I want you to be present and understand this part is really hard to. I am not using used chocolate. <laughs> Although I'm taking them out of the sink. <laughs> the reason is, see, my chocolate basket went down the sink. But it's okay. They are still alive. <laughs> You're alive, I'm kidding. No, are you sure? Yes. Uh, Joe, are you sure you need chocolate or not? You are tired, I can tell. This is reason. Reason gives you a lot of energy. I hope you are not allergic to nuts. Anybody else who is really tired? I want to wake up. Yeah. That Marina, you are too tired. I'm sorry. Yeah. That Aster, yes. I'm sorry, Jason. She's not, she's not tired. Anymore. Thank you, man. Anybody else who is tired? I want to wake you up. This is the important part. You can't afford to be tired. Are you late? Yes, yes? Liz? Yes? Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, right here. That's Jerry Ann. Anybody else? Are you sure, Nandy? Nandy? Are you sure? Yeah? Oh, yeah. See, I have to see. AJ? AJ? JJ, you missed it. You missed it special today. How would you do that? Are you ready now? So ready. So thank you so much. I love your enthusiasm and energy, Ethan. Guys, guys, let's calculate four bar charge on carbon. Total number of valence electrons on carbon. How many valence electrons on carbon? Four. Minus total number of non bonding electrons. How many non bonding electrons do you have on this carbon? Two. Two. Thank you. Minus half of the total number of bonding electrons. How many bonding electrons? Is this two electrons in bond bond? Four electrons in these two. So four plus two, six, yes? Half of six is three. I get negative bond charge. So carbon is not neutral. It has negative bond charge, right? How about oxygen? Oxygen, help me. Six, Total number of valence electrons. What group number oxygen belongs to? Six. six. So can I say valence electron are six? Yeah. Minus total number of non-bonding electrons. How many non-bonding electrons in this? Two. Yes, two, thank you. Minus half of total number of bonding electrons. Is this bonding electron? Two, two. four, six. six. So half of six? is three. So you get plus one charge, right? So with this formula, we have charge, just like going to Macy's, right? Molecule is going to sit down and calculate. Let me see other options. Am I have, going to have charge in the other options, or I can get out without the charge, without using my credit card? OK, I want to answer some questions, then continue. Santana, you have a question? Go. Oh, no, I'm just doing the math. OK, anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, Austin. What are we doing? <laughs> Can we go back like 10 minutes? And yes. I'm going back. 10 minutes, did you say? No, what are we doing? What does this tell us? I'll tell you right here. Are you kidding? <laughs> this is what I'm doing. The formula is H2 CH2O. We are deciding whether the formula is going to be this. This is one option. And, or is it going to be carbon in center, hydrogen here, oxygen here, and hydrogen here? Is it carbon in center, or is it both oxygen and carbon in center? Because both oxygen and carbon in this formula are unique atom. You know how we said unique atom goes in center? We're trying to see which one is going to happen, which is correct formula. 
So what we have just proven is this, that in this formula, you have negative charge on carbon and positive charge on oxygen. So if this structure is formed, this has four more charge. Having a charge means an instability. Hard to happen. You need energy, extra expense. Yes, dear? How do you know if an atom is unique? Unique means one. Okay. If you have one oxygen, and one carbon, these are unique atoms. Unit by, by unit, I, by unit, I mean one. Thank you for asking. That was very important in many students' mind, I think. When you ask, you help them. Okay. Now the question is, is this having equal charge or not? If this doesn't have a charge, it's a better option, right? Are you with me so far? Austin, go. Neutral? I'm sorry? Isn't that neutral? Which one? The first one. Yes. Yes, one positive and one negative added together, they become zero. Over our charge is zero. So why wouldn't they just use that? Use what? I need bonding. Yeah. I need bonding. That's a molecular formula. That doesn't tell you anything. We need bonding. We need geometry. Geometry determines property. So I need to know, is this correct or that one? That is molecular formula. It doesn't give you enough information. It's like telling you there is a person with two eyes and one nose and two ears and uh, two legs and two hands sitting inside the room. You won't know it is Austin or not. You need more information. Yes. Anybody else? Okay, guys, let's go. Go ahead, Ethan. No, we use this formal charge formula. Yes. Oh, yes. We use this calculation. So this is one option. Let me look at the other option. This is the other option. Yes or no? Yes. Is this a better option or not? Molecule is doing this without. This is, this is the better option. Let's check. Do we have a still 12 electrons? Four from carbon, six from oxygen. That's 10. Two from hydrogen. Yes? yes. 12 electrons. How, how many do I have complete octet? No, hydrogen would never have complete octet, but it has two. It looks like helio. It's happy. Carbon, does it have eight electrons? Yes or no? Four bonds on carbon, eight electrons. Yes, yes. Carbon has four electrons bonding, two electrons, non-bonding, eight electrons. Yes or no? So that's a plausible structure. Yes? And then I'm going to calculate four more charge to see if this structure has four more charge or not. If it has less formal charge or no formal charge is more acceptable. Lisa, I need your attention here. Okay. Oh, Liz, I meant. Guys, formal charge on carbon. Total number of valence electron on carbon is four. Yes or no? Yes. Total number of non-bonding electron on carbon. How many? Zero. How many on carbon? Zero. Zero. There is no lone pair. Zero. Minus half of total bonding of electrons. How many total bonding electrons do you see on carbon? Oh. Eight? Yes, who said eight? Good job, thank you, Paul. So half of eight, right? Do I get zero? So there is no charge on carbon. In this case, there was charge carbon. No, I will answer a question. Now we know this might be a better option. Let's check the oxygen, guys. We are looking at one atom at a time. What is number of valence electron on oxygen? Belongs to group 6A, yes? What did you say? Six. Six. Minus total number of non-bonding electrons. How many non-bonding electrons do you see? Four. Four. Minus half of the total number of bonding electron on oxygen. How many bonding electrons on oxygen? Four. Four. So do I get zero charge? So what is this telling you? This option doesn't have four more charge. The other option has four more charge. It takes energy to separate positive and negative. This is unstable. This is going to basis. You have to charge part of the money for the present to your credit card. And this option is like going to Walmart. You buy the same gift with the money in your pocket. You don't have to charge anything to your 
credit card. So molecules do calculation and decide, just like you do. Isn't it amazing? There is logic in this universe. Everything has its own logic. That's why we are studying science. We are trying to understand secrets of nature. Nature doesn't reveal its secret easily. We have to find it out gradually. That's how you have this amazing world today. Digital world. Yes, somebody had a question. Go. That's uh, Holly, yes? Go. How come there's no dots around H's? Well, H's, we said hydrogen. There is one electron in hydrogen. What is the noble gas that hydrogen is looking up to? Helium. Helium has two electrons. So having two electrons for hydrogen is ultimate happiness. Hydrogen would never have complete octet. Every other atom would, hydrogen exception. Hydrogen always makes one, one bond, two electrons, that's ultimate happiness, just like helium. Anybody else? Anybody else? Rob, why? Are you doing okay? Okay. Yes, uh, let me try to remember your name. How did I forget? Go, Haiti, go! Louder. What she has said is that the reason why we don't do charge on the H. Correct. Correct. If I do the charge on the H, what do I get? Number of valence electron on hydrogen is one. Minus total number of non-bonding electron is zero. So one minus zero is zero. Half of the bonding electron, which is two. Half of two is one. So one minus one is zero. Hydrogen doesn't have a charge. Any other questions? Guys? Guys, Muraya, are you doing okay? Are you tired? Gabby, are you tired? Chocolate? Okay, okay. You are going to get this important concept. Kayla, are you tired? I'm all right after energy drink. Okay. Guys, so rules for formal charges, neutral molecules in which there is no formal charge are preferable to one in which formal charge are present. Same thing that I said. If you don't have to charge anything to your credit card, you would rather to get that item. Molecules do the same. Number two, Lewis structures with larger formal charges are less plausible. Guys, what if you go to Walmart, you have to pay, buy the gift, pay $20 in your pocket, you have $10 on your credit card. In Macy, you have to put $20 on credit card. Of course you go to Walmart. Here, if there are two options, one has negative one plus one, the other one has negative two and plus two, it's harder to separate those charges. So the less charge, the better. What if we have two options which have, they both have formal charge and they have equal amount of formal charge, which is better? It says the option which has negative charge, negative formal charge on more electron negative atom is more acceptable. So you look where negative charge is sitting. If negative charge in one atom, in one structure is sitting on electron negative atom, that's a better option when you have equal charges. So, go guys. Cat got it already? Yes, Rob identified that we just did. The answer is on the board, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> yes, the second one with no charge, yes? Thank you. You have a question? Go. You got it. Thank you. Yes? Does this make sense? So between these two, which is better, left or right? That's all we're asking. Less charge, more stable.